Hello, welcome to your lecture on acute bronchitis. That's the clinical term implying a self-limited inflammation of the large airways of the lung. It's characterized by cough without pneumonia. The disorder affects approximately 5% of adults annually. There's a higher incidence during the winter and fall than there is in summer and spring. Acute bronchitis is the ninth most common illness among outpatients. One of the first things you need to know about acute bronchitis is it's produced by a virus. This is probably the diagnosis where we overprescribe antibiotics the most often because what we know is that these respiratory viruses, particularly influenza, cause the large majority of cases of uncomplicated acute bronchitis. Specific viruses associated with acute bronchitis includes those that produce primary low respiratory tract infections such as influenza A and B, parainfluenza, and RSV, as well as viruses that more commonly produce upper respiratory tract symptoms such as your uh, rhinovirus, adenovirus, and coronavirus. Again, virus. This is probably the most um, overused antibiotic diagnosis that we have. You need to explain to the patients that just because they are coughing up colored sputum, have a fever, shortness of air, that that doesn't mean that they have pneumonia. Without lung consolidation, they don't have pneumonia, which means that this is caused by a virus. And you can give them antibiotics, but it's not going to shorten the life of the disease. Subjective data, usually there's a sudden onset of cough. You have to make sure there's no evidence of pneumonia, asthma, or acerbation of COPD. And also make sure that this isn't just a common cold. The cough initially is dry and unproductive, but then it turns to be productive. Sometimes it'll turn into really a muco uh, purulent sputum. That can indicate a secondary infection, and there's always the chance that a viral infection will turn into a secondary bacterial infection. But as long as it is the viral infection, you can't give an antibiotic to take care of the virus. So an antibiotic most likely is not going to prevent it from turning into a bacterial infection. It either is or it isn't. Now one of the things that you really need to think about, and I think we talk about this with COPD, is that if it is an acute acerbation of COPD, there is a, a possibility that if there is a change in the type of sputum and it becomes very micro, uh, very purulent, then that could be an indication of a bacterial infection that would then need to be treated. But it gets a little bit more complicated. And really right now we're just talking about that young healthy patient that comes in with acute bronchitis and requests their z -pack. Objective data. They could have wheezing. That doesn't mean they have pneumonia. They could have shortness of air also. Doesn't mean they have pneumonia. The cough can be non-productive or they could have um, colored sputum. They're going to be tired, especially if they're not sleeping at night. They may have a fever. It shouldn't be a high-grade fever. It should be low-grade. They can have myalgias, be sore all over, and that's from the cough or just not sleeping well. They can also have uh, some hoarseness. Again, this is caused by a virus, so you're going to see a lot of different types of symptoms that may present. Okay, I can't say this enough. No antibiotics for acute bronchitis. People are going to come in, they're going to want their z pack they're going to have a fever, they're going to have yellow sputum, and they're not really going to understand exactly why that you won't treat it. And you just have to spend a lot of time talking to them about the fact that it's a virus and an antibiotic is really not going to impact it. If you're uncomfortable or, or they're really persistent, they don't want to have to miss work to come back in. If they get sick, etc., then you can write an antibiotic and ask them not to fill it for three days. Wait to see if they get better. Tell them that an antibiotic is just going to cost them a copay and it's not going to help at all. So when people are getting a lot more educated now about limited use of antibiotics and are pretty good about it. Really don't want to use cough suppressants. And we talked about this in pneumonia. We we'll talk about this, I think, with COPD as well. You know, cough is a defense mechanism. You don't want to suppress cough. 
Now, if you have to give them something because they can't sleep at night, giving them something to kind of help them rest if they're really, really fatigued is something that you can do. But what works really, really well is albuterol inhalers because that opens up um, and bronchodilates and allows them to breathe and it also helps with a cough and it makes a big difference and is much more effective because once it does open open them up if they are also drinking their water that you're asking them to drink then they'll be able to cough up if they have anything that's productive there so a big part of this management is actually patient education and it's probably the toughest part 